with each succeeding development, the airmail mystery gets more and more difficult to solve. The Department of Justice has assigned Miss Irene Delroy and her assistant Fitzgerald to find out why Trans-American Airlines have lost three of their very latest high-speed mail planes in mysterious crashes within a month. In each case, a valuable shipment of bonds and securities was found to be missing when the wreckage of the plane was located. Andy Andrews, veteran pilot of Trans-American, is flying east with the night air mail. Miss Delroy, Fitzgerald, and Jimmy Gifford, roving newspaper reporter, have just made the astounding discovery that there is a plot to wreck the plane in which Andrews is flying and rob the mail compartment of a shipment of currency. The radio operator at Salt Flats is trying desperately to reach Andrews' plane by radio. Salt Flats calling Andrews in 655. Salt Flats to Andrews in 655. Go ahead. Can't get him, ma'am. Not a word out of him. Do you think he might be out of range of your transmitter? Not likely, ma'am. Might be skipped distance, though. Want me to try him through Metropolitan? I doubt if you'll be able to reach him, but you might try. I'll try to get him through Metro. Salt flat to Metro. Salt flat to Metro. Go ahead. Metro to Salt Flat. Go ahead. Salt flat. We're trying to raise Andy in 655. We're afraid he's in trouble. Try to get him from there, will you? Go ahead. That road is all flat. The last we heard of Andy was when he was talking to you. He said his motor cut out over Devil's Canyon. I'll try to raise him. Wait a minute. Metropolitan calling Andrews. Metro to Andrews. Go ahead. Oh, I'm afraid they won't raise him, Mr. Delroy. Looks like we've lost another ship and maybe a pilot. Fitz is probably right, Irene. About all we can do is hope that Andrews sets that plane down on the floor of the canyon, okay? Metro to Andrews. Metro. No use, all flat. You won't answer. It's no use, Miss Delroy. Well, there's only one thing to do. That is to get to the canyon as quickly as we can. Andrews may need help. Fitz. Did you turn Ferrelli over to the airport police? Yeah, I told him to book him on suspicion, not let anyone near him. Not even a lawyer. Good. Tell our pilot to get the ship warmed up, Jimmy. We're leaving for Devil's Canyon right away. I'll tell him. Tell him that we may need some parachute flares, too. I'll tell him right away, Irene. Lawrence, tell Metro we're flying to the spot where Andrews was last heard. Keep in touch with us and we'll relay orders through your station. Yes, ma'am, but... It's pretty risky business flying to the canyon tonight, ma'am. Andrew's life may be at stake. It's not a question of risk, but a question of right. Yes, ma'am. But take it easy. Don't take any chances. I'll keep you posted on the weather. We'll be at the canyon in an hour. Radio Metro that we're leaving. Come, Fitz. Yes, ma'am. Hurry, Fitz. They're warming the ship up. I'm coming, ma'am. But I don't like the idea. Open the door, Jimmy. All right, Fitz, climb up with the pilot. Yes, ma'am. Tell him to cut to the left of Guadalupe Peak. We're missing the beacons, but we're taking the shortcut. All set, Jimmy? Right. All set, Fitz? Yes, ma'am. business. He'll try it, though, if you want him to. Tell him to go ahead and try to land. Tighten your safety belt, Jimmy. Wow, won't I have a story if we pull through this? Say, he's diving it. Drop another flare, Fitz. Yes, ma'am. There she goes. We're down in the canyon now, Jimmy. Look, 
There's a clearing. Get ahead. Yeah, we're going to try for that clearing, Mel. I think I see Andrew's ship down there. Where, Jimmy? Right over there to the left of the flare. Look. It looks like the ship, all right. And it's not wrecked. How are we coming, Fitz? Okay, ma'am, so far. We're clear of those rocks back there. Hold it, he's leveling off. We made it. We're down. Boy. That was one of the biggest thrills of my life, Jimmy. Who says these trans-American pilots don't know their stuff? We've got to get to that ship as soon as possible. Hurry, Fitz. Yes, ma'am. I have a feeling that all isn't as it should be back there. Come on, Jimmy. We'll need you, too. Okay. It's just around this bend. Look, there's the ship. It isn't hurt. Not even the landing gear bent. Well, that's luck. Come on. Just a second, Fitz. Wait. Oh, what's wrong, ma'am? Do you see Andrews anywhere about? Uh, no, ma'am. That's what's puzzling me. If Andrews set the ship down as safely as he did, he should be somewhere around. He wouldn't go away and leave the mail. That's right, ma'am. I think it'd be better if we moved up rather cautiously. Maybe a trap of some sort. Do you want to take any chances? Yes, ma'am. I'll go ahead. I have a hunch that something's wrong, Irene. I don't know why, but I have. I feel the same way about it, Jimmy. Let's follow Fitz. I'm glad I brought a gun. Wouldn't have much chance to use it, though, with all these rocks around here. Fitz is walking up to the ship now. Andrews mustn't be about. Come on. Andrews did a sweet job of landing this plane with a dead motor. Hmm. We'll have to take the ship out here on a truck. They'll never be able to take off out of this canyon. It's not humanly possible. Right, Jimmy. See anything, Fitz? No, ma'am, not yet. Baggage compartment's open. The baggage compartment? Yeah. Yeah, and the mail compartment's open too, ma'am. Huh. Lock's broken. Oh, there's mail all over the ground over here. Look. Hmm. See if Andrew's bag is in the baggage compartment. His traveling bag, ma'am? Yes. Uh, or no, ma'am, it ain't. There's nothing here. Oh. Just what I thought. Andrews was implicated in this, if he wasn't the actual leader of the gang. He set the ship down here, took the money shipment, and skipped out. Yeah, you're wrong this time, Gifford. Look at this. What is it? What does it look like? Blood. That's right. Blood. There's been a fight of some kind here. Fitz! What, ma'am? That blood is coming from directly under the cockpit. I wonder... All right, look, ma'am. Uh, give me a hand up, Gifford. Right, Sergeant. Here you go. Uh. Uh, that's enough, Gifford. Let me down. Is it? Yes, ma'am. It's Andrews. He slumped forward in the seat. Well, let's get him out, quick. I'll give you a hand, Sergeant. No use, Gifford. He's dead. Dead? But this isn't a crash. I don't see Looks how he like could... like our robbery case has turned into a murder, Miss Delroy. I was afraid of that, Fitz. Is it very bad? Pretty bad, ma'am. Andrews is shot through the head. Oh! You're sure he's... Nothing we can do, ma'am. Oh, somehow I hold myself to blame for this, Fitz. I shouldn't you have let him... You did all you could, ma'am. You radioed him to turn back. He didn't listen. Oh, I shouldn't have allowed him to take that money shipment out on the run tonight. Fitz, this is the last draw. We're working day and night until we solve this case. If they wreck the mail lines, they may start on the passenger ship. It's our duty, Fitz, to stop any further developments. Well, let's get busy. Yes, ma'am. What first, ma'am? Take a good look at the cockpit. See if Andrew's gun is in his holster. Uh, no, ma'am. It's on the floorboard. Is the bullet hole in the front or in the back of his head? The front, ma'am. Square between the eyes. Oh. Probably a forty-five. Is the ignition switch off? Yes, ma'am. His safety belt. Is it unfastened? Yes, ma'am. That's all fit. What do you think, Irene? Oh, it's very plain what happened, Jimmy. Andrews came in here for a landing. He set the ship down safely, cut a switch, unfastened his safety belt, and started to get out. Someone came up alongside the ship. Andrews reached for his gun, but it was too late. And then? Whoever shot him came around to this side of the ship and pried the mail compartment open, ripped open the bags until he found the shipment from the bank, and then took Andrews' traveling bag out of the baggage compartment and left. But what did he want with Andrew's bag? Oh, there are a lot of questions that remain to be answered, Jimmy. Which brings us back to our original question. What is that? Why did these ships go haywire in the first place? 
What makes the motor stop right over this canyon? That's another thing we're going to find out before we leave. We have a whole ship to examine this time, not merely a mass of wreckage. You mean you're I going mean to... I mean to have that motor examined piece by piece. There's a reason why that motor stopped over this very spot, and I intend to find it. You're too late, ma'am. I already found it. What? You mean you know why the motor cut out on Andrews tonight? Yeah, and I know how the job was done. Look over here, ma'am. You see this thing here? Yes. What is it? It's a booster magneto, ma'am. You use it to give a hot spark to start the ship. Well? Well, this one ain't really a booster mag, ma'am. Look, it's just a shell. See what I found inside? A time clock. Sure. See, that's how it was done. Someone who had access to this ship put this time clock in the ignition circuit. The time was set for the exact number of minutes required to take the plane out over this canyon. Then the clock clicks, the contact snaps, and the motor isn't getting any spark. Sergeant, you'd hit the nail right on the head. You solved that part of the case. A time clock, eh? Mm. In the ignition circuit. Well, what do you know about that? What was that? Look, Miss, fire! Quick! Where? Jimmy, right under quick. the ship, you see? They planted a small magnesium bomb under the gas tank. It was time to go off and burn the ship before we got here, but we beat him to it. We can't stop that fire, ma'am. It's spreading too quickly. Give me a hand, Gifford, so we can get Andrews out of that cockpit. Okay. okay. This ship will go up like tinder. Hurry! I may be just a flatfoot to you, Gifford, but I got a pretty good idea who started this fire, and I'm going to run him down. Uh-huh. 